that it it might come up to um, just on magic hands. I'm not sure. Okay. It's it's starting now. I'll let you know when it's. I freaking hate my. I've never done this before, so always new experiences. <laughs> All right. There. So we are live. Okay. I gotta put my glasses on. Shit, I'm so like fidgety. <laughs> <sighs> That's all right. All right, I'm going to start sharing this out. Let's see. More options. Share to a page. So go ahead. Um, let me see, magic hands, I'll share. I'm going to send you the link. There we go, we'll get going here shortly if anybody pops on. All right, there I sent you the link. Go ahead there and then share that out. We're gonna get this shared out before we begin here if anybody's jumping on to watch yet. How do I share that out? Uh, should be on the bottom right, should be a little share button. Pops on here if anybody's jumping Got it. Yet. All right. How do I share that out? <laughs> uh, should be on the bottom right, should be. It's all shared out. Pops on here if anybody's jumping Got out. it. <laughs> all right. Let's see how this all goes. I'll share it out. Oh, that's weird. It's going to keep repeating. <laughs> all <laughs> right. The spirits cool. here. So yeah, we'll get this all shared. I see people are jumping on now. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, a super exciting evening. Because there is a lot of activity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> and all the energy happening and the planets and... People are reacting in wild ways. Everybody is in a tizzy. All right, there we go. I have it shared everywhere that I can. Oh. Perfect. So I will just come back to our meeting. There we go. So that's a little better. All right, we are live on Facebook and if anybody wants to post any questions, comment under the Magic Hands link and we will try to answer them. I'm not sure how this is going to work through the Zoom Live. All right, there we go. Welcome, Deborah Murphy, Windhorse Shamanic Services. Hello, hello. Nice to be here. Oh, so how has your day been? How, let's start there. How has the energy been today? What are you experiencing? Um, energy today has been, um, I don't know, quite quiet. Um, this weekend I was working um, as a crisis counselor all weekend at night. So um, just recovering from three nights of that and all the energy that's flying around everywhere with Halloween and now into All Saints Day. So it's been pretty active, um, you know, energetically, spiritually, but also with us humans just running around trying to get things done and trick-or-treating and birthday days and yeah it's an intense energy but a good energy absolutely why why is that this time of year that there's so much more like activity and people kind of up, up ticking and you know a lot of things going on but you know kind of flowing smooth what is this uh what is the all saints day where do the spirits come from during these during these days I think, I think it's just, you know, as we go through the seasons and the cycles of nature, you know, the sunlight is getting thinner, it's getting colder and energy kind of like pulls back into the earth and we begin to slow down. And as we begin to slow down and it gets darker, we spend more time in that shadow world, that veil between, you know, this world and the next is a little thinner. Um, and definitely you notice it, like the moment you get into like October, November time, um, you know, energy just gets a little bit more intense on an energetic level. So for us shamanic practitioners or healers or psychic mediums, you know, we too tend to notice more activity as that veil thins at Sam Hain last night. So yeah, it's an exciting time for anything paranormal. Yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely. And we all have some experience in all of that. So tell us a little bit about um, how you grew up and, and kind of what, what got you into spirit work and things. What was your life like? Yeah. Um, well, I grew up, my name is Devon Murphy. Um, I grew up in England, Devon, England. Um, and the place that I grew up was really super magical. Um, uh, we lived on the edge of Dartmoor and Dartmoor is a really beautiful kind of ancient uh, moorland um, with historical oak trees. And that, you know, since I was a little girl, um, I remember going there all the time, you know, on little trips and going to the cathedrals and singing because I was in a Catholic school. So we used to, you know, sit in these like really old cathedrals singing in Latin. And I would see angelic beings and spirits just popping up all over the place. Um, and particularly like in the woods and on Dartmoor, very ancient magical fairy-like realms so um it was kind of an awakening for me as a kid well it was just like something that I was always like uh, connected to Devon England is incredibly magical so yeah it's it, I kind of grew up in England with Irish parents and uh I left England around like 23-ish and start 22-ish and started traveling all over the world so wonderful wonderful mm -hmm. so what brought you to shamanism how did how did that come into play in your life yeah, the path of the shaman, um, shamanic healing shamanism um, is something I think I was born to do. Um, I found that out with my first teacher. I was around 19, 20 years old. I was having so many experiences um, and a lot of um, spirit activity, um, also two near-death experiences. I had a lot of accidents uh, because my spirit was out of my body and I wasn't really fully grounded in myself. And so um you know it's it basically led me to a shaman a shamanic healer um i was very interested because of you know the shaman is the one who knows the one who sees a shaman practitioner is somebody that goes into an altered state to go and speak with the spirit world or go into different dimensional frequencies and so when i met him um he was so incredible how he saw, you know, kind of like my past lives and how my soul was actually really depleted from past lives. So he did a lot of soul retrieval on me, personal power retrieval, extracting any like harmful um, energies from me, whether it was like old contracts and things that I made in the past, in this lifetime, past lives that no longer serve my highest good. Um, and he worked with me and I'll never forget that one session I walked out of there and I was just floating on air. It changed my life. Um, and then I realized, and he told me in that, that shamanic journey that, you know, this was my path. Um, a lot of shamans or shamanic practitioners of old um, experience a lot of um, disease, sickness uh, as they're going through that initiationary period. And mine was a lot of accidents. I think I've broken probably most bones in my body, um, going under buses, falling off horses, getting crushed by horses, you name it. I've kind of been there, seen it, done it. And um, in those moments, I think, you know, well, I know that, you know, I was a uh, when, it, when you're in an accident, everything slows down. It's like you're in this kind of replay thing and it's all slow motion. Um, and when I was in those moments, that's when I would see spirits standing there um, and they would tell me things. Um, and they would tell me, I have a mission. I need to get back and fulfill that mission. So I would tell people as a teenager, all these things that I was seeing and nobody believed me. They thought I was just making it all up or doing it for attention or something. So it wasn't until you know I met my teachers that, I really kind of came into the realm of the of the shaman. So, and the shaman is one. I don't call myself a shaman or a shamaness. I just call myself a shamanic practitioner. But um, a shamanic practitioner is somebody's got one foot in this world and one foot in the spirit world. We are multi-dimensional beings. We live in a multi-dimensional universe. Um, and it's our birthright, every one of us, to be able to go in and out of different consciousness and different realms. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. It's a really wonderful, wonderful description and just uh, really what led you down and, and into this and everything. So your life completely changed from when you first began getting these healings to at the end. And now, you know, continuing with this work for other people and everything is, is absolutely powerful. Mm -hmm. So yeah, how, like, how does the spirit world um, really affect, how does that come into play in our lives? 
I think, you know, um, the spirit world is with us all the time. There is no differentiation. You know, you, you don't just suddenly walk down a haunted hallway and there they are. They're with us all the time. And, you know, we are spirits and we're spirits living in this meat suit, walking around. When we die, the meat suit goes into the earth. And, you know, we, wherever we go, we either, you know, go on and spend some time in those divine realms or, we, you know, we end up, um, you know, kind of either around family members or we move on or sometimes you know if we have mass soul loss um the soul is basically the spirit it's kind of like that blueprint of the spirit if we have a lot of accidents abuse trauma loss of loved ones or we're stuck on someone we can't let go our spirit could get trapped and in this reality um we call it the middle world um, and so in the sh in the shamanic kind of dimensional world, we talk about the upper world being, you know, a place where ascended beings reside, the angelic ones and the ascended masters. Um, and beyond that, you know, obviously like uh, different star systems where a lot of us are from, our souls, our spirits. And this middle world we're in is the earth realm, but we see it in a kind of more spiritual, with a more spiritual overlay. So we're talking to like, um, you know, the spirit of the tree, the mountains, the lakes, the rivers, instead of just seeing that th through. 3D image underneath this this uh, middle world is the lower world the lower world is where a lot of our ancestors and our power animals reside our totem spirits and helpers and deeper down into the core of the earth is a place called the land of the dead and a lot of Christians you know call that um purgatory where a lot and so you know if if a spirit um dies suddenly you know or in, kind of in a shock that spirit sometimes may not see that light and move on so they get stuck they could get stuck in the middle where we call them ghosts, you know, or entities, whatever. But a lot of um, those spirits will actually move back down. That gravity takes them into the land of the dead. Land of the dead is a place where lost souls reside. And, you know, even when we do um, soul retrieval, personal power retrieval, a lot of uh, people's spirits and energies, and especially if there's been mass, you know, murders or the Holocaust, you know, there's a lot of spirits that have got stuck in those realms and they either stay haunting this middle world or they slide down into these other realms. So yeah, spirit is everywhere. It's not just, you know, in a haunted house. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. Absolutely. So like, do you have any examples of how people that aren't doing what, you know, um, shamanic practitioners do or energy workers do in how like these spirits, you might, might manifest and you might notice something going on in your home or around you. Yeah. I think, you know, even people that aren't really kind of, uh, well, so we don't have those gifts, you know, of like sight or whatever, a lot of people will sense or feel something, you know, if there's something around, they may get shivers all over their body, they may get goosebumps. Um, sometimes people get really sharp headaches or tight headaches, they feel nauseated and sick, or they feel like a cold wind just like moves through them within their body or past their body. So, I mean, we're all, you know, multidimensional beings, we all have um, sensations, we're all intuitive. It's just some people have a little bit more of a finer tune to that. That, but I would say most people can feel energy no matter what. Um, and, you know, I think if you don't have that sight, sometimes it can be hard for people to believe because they're like, oh, that could just be the wind or a draft, but their intuition is screaming or they're hearing voices, um, you know, and, and I think, you know, you have to, for a lot of people who are in their heads a lot or overthinkers, they tend to kind of dispel anything that they don't see. But when you feel those sensations and in a home, you know, there's cold areas in the home or you just feel sad when you get in the home, you've got no energy. You, you're like, wow, every time I'm at home, I feel like my energy is sucked out of me. But when I go outside and I'm like in other places, I feel energized and I come back and I feel really displaced and miserable and having bad dreams. And you know, there's something around. Um, you know, other other energies that uh, bring themselves in, you know, like heavier demonic energies, there's always the darker like smells of like sulfur, rotting flesh. Um, sometimes you may hear the door knocking and it's always in threes or a growl that's always in threes. You may wake up with scratches on your body. So, you know, it's it's different. It's kind of like recognizing different energy. And the internet is full of info if you are confused, um, you know, and we're here too. So, you know, give us a call or email us um, if you ever experience, you know, you're experiencing a lot of things that you, re you really need out of your house. Because sometimes people can live with spirit um, 
and, and ghosts in their home, they love them. Other times those ghosts and those spirits can drain them of their energy um, and leave them depressed and they can cause strokes, illness, sickness. So those are the ones that, you know, need to move on. Sure. Sense. Sure. So, so I guess kind of rolling into that, how would you know if you have a problem and, or, or maybe some steps that you can kind of take even on your own to try to help the situation on your own, but you know, when do you know you have a problem and need to call somebody? Um, I think, you know, most houses have energy. I mean, they do, you know, we're sitting on, on ancient land. Uh, this planet's been around for forever. Plus, you know, um, like say Green Bay, Green Bay is a lot of activity because there's a lot of water uh, that runs underneath people's homes and water does carry spirit energy. Um, and so, you know, the normal thing is everybody's heard of smudging, um, smudging a home um, once a week or maybe every day. You know, if you come home from work and you're feeling really heavy you, and you just feel weighted down by other people's problems or your own, smudge yourself off before you even enter the home. Um, get in your home and smudge and you can use the sage. The uh, cedar is really good to use. Um, and also like tree resins and frankincense and myrrh copal all those things are really great to use to kind of lift the energy and particularly you want to make sure that you like go into the corners the dark corners or any corner because energy kind of sits in those corners you want to smudge the basement and you want to start there and go up right through the house open the windows and ask for a blessing on the house you know ask to release any negative energy that's there and then bless the house. Um, we always talk about, you, you know, using, uh, well, not using, working with Archangel Michael, um, Mother Mary, uh, really highly evolved archangels that are good, you know, that have been working with uh, heavy, dark energies for a millennia. When you ask, and you know, Archangel Michael to bless your home, um, you, you feel the energy lifting immediately. Um, other people, you know, um, like to use salt. We use a lot of salt. <laughs> I mean, you can just use regular salt. Uh, black salt's really good too, depending on how much you want to spend. But after you've kind of smudged your house, you can go around the outside of the house with, and make a line of salt from the doorway into the doorway out. And then go start in the basement and throw salt into every corner of the room. And that salt repels any negative heavy energy and lifts the space immediately. Um, usually when you salt a house, it lasts for about three months. So you, you don't want to put it on your calendar because that last couple of weeks, that last month, you might start seeing activity again. So I go ahead smudging and salting. I think um, we get a lot of calls when people, you know, they, they say, okay, I, I sage every day. Um, I salt all the time, I'm praying, I'm blessing the home, filling it with light, and still there's growling or I'm waking up with scratches and, um, you know, I'm terrified to go in my home, I want to get out of there. Um, that's when I would say give us a call, because then you have an infestation, you're probably sitting on a vortex. A vortex is an earth energy. Um, it's an opening deep into the earth, and it brings up all kinds of beings from the spirit world, from the land of the dead hybrid beings um, that can, there's thousands of them. <laughs> um, and, you know, kind of working with closing those vortexes down um, and, you know, working with spirit, kind of the way we work with it, sorry, I'll go back to that a little bit, but um, what I've been doing for 30 years is going into people's homes, land, their land buildings, and working with people in, um, you know, deep, kind of depossessing people and homes and lands that have been possessed by really negative energy. And I do that by talking spirit to spirit to the, the energy, the spirit, because I've, I've come across many times where I've walked into a space or a forest that, you know, is, has got a very heavy presence of Native American energy and they don't want you in there. And so if I sit there and I drum and I go into an altered state, I will, you know, basically talk with them just spirit to spirit they recognize my spirit instead of my skin and then that way I can relate to the spirit talk to it and ask it why it's still there you know what it needs to, in order to move on many times um you know spirit is stuck um because it, it can't find its way out other times there's groups of energy and spirit that are still stuck to the land because they they believe they're custodians of the land and they should never leave so there's so many different scenarios and oftentimes they'll say we just need a ritual on the full moon or you need to feed us 
Um, every time you have a meal, you need to take a bit of your food and feed us. Or if there's little people on the land, you know, you give them Skittles or candies to keep them from, you know, putting bad energy on your home. So there's, I mean, you know, it's through trial and error that I've learned to work with all kinds of different energy. And I'm always learning every day. Um, but, you know, when people call us, we have, we just have like a, a vast knowledge of, you know, different energies and different spirits that, you know, we've worked with over the years. So. Sure. Sure. Right. That sounds like an awful lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's, you know, and there's, there's an awful lot of work to be done. Have you noticed, um, you know, just with the collective and what's been happening the year and a half with COVID and everything, has there been a big uptick in, in, in these kind of calls and things? Yeah, um, particularly, well, the last five years have definitely become more intense. Um, and, you know, we were talking about this the other day, um, you know, the in the old days, I call it, you know, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it, there's still stuff that isn't. But, you know, the last five to 10 years, um, those darker energies are becoming extremely manipulative. Um, you know, things that we would do in the past no longer work. They've become really good at, you know, moving through different energy um, that you put up sage, you know, smudging when you're around really heavy, dark, demonic energy the spirit will go out the door and hang out for about an hour and come back in again. So, you know, you have to be incredibly sharp um, about what you're doing and spirit on the other dimensions in the other dimensions are helping us. And they're, they're having to change too the way they work. But, you know, with COVID it's brought a lot of um, negative, really negative, heavy energy. People are at home a lot more. They're very depressed. They've lost jobs or, you know, um, they're not working or they're hanging around people instead of going out and about, which brings up a lot of depression, a lot of suicide, a lot of anger. And guess what? Those dark energies, those darker spirits love to feed off that. They like to feed off despair and anger and sadness and depression. And we've noticed that more and more people, you know, when they are dealing with depression, it's harder for them to get out of it. And then they, they say, I feel like there's a presence over me at night. There's, there's a heavy presence that's lays, that lays on my chest or I hear laughter. Um, and then guess what happens then? You know, there's a void in that person. So they go out there and, you know, they're drinking a lot or they're doing drugs or whatever their addictions are. And then spirit gets them again through the addictions um, until, you know, it's almost like their life force gets fed off from these darker energies. The darker energies are getting bigger and the, the people that are suffering, uh, their light is getting dimmer and dimmer. So it definitely has been an upswing, yeah, of a lot of, you know, a lot of possessions and attachments too, um, you know, from a lot of drug use um, and drinking and just practices of addiction that, you know, people are into now because, you know, they, they're they going through a lot of uh, problems and, you know, on, a, on an everyday basis. Sure. Sure. And now with Windhorse Shamanic Services out of Green Bay, um, I, you've been doing that a long time. You've had that for a long time. And then there's also the, the counseling bit that you've also added over time. Uh, what, what is like the correlation between, I guess, you know, the spiritual health and the mental health and how that all ties in together, you know, with all the work that we're doing and what you're doing, um, you know, and also bringing that forward into your new venture and everything. So yeah, it is a good question. Um, well, with the shamanic healing, I've been doing that for 30 years and you cannot heal your mind. You cannot heal your physical body, your emotional bodies, your mental bodies without healing the spirit first. And, um, you know, with Western medicine, it's always about, you know, putting a bandaid on everything and medication to numb everything. But hey, there's, a, there's another issue going on, an underlying issue that's going on that's a lot deeper. And it's to do with the spirit and, and a lot to do with the brain. And so we, you know, in, so, it's, sorry, in the shamanic healing, we heal the spirit by doing soul retrievals. Um, we're going back into past lives in this lifetime where there's been trauma, accidents, abuse. We do personal power retrievals where people may have given their power away to um, husbands and wives, their boss, um, the government, you know, people living in fear. That's personal power being given away. Then we do extractions and we'll do extractions of any harmful entities, attachments, um, anything of a lower vibration it could even be ancestors. It could even be spirits, um, you know, that are in your family that have died and got stuck and they're panicking and they want to be around you and they, they stick on you. 
Um, and so we end up re removing a lot of that. And another thing we go back into is removing contracts from the past. Um, you know, there, there, there could be vows that you've taken in the church or vows that you've taken in certain religions and cults. And hey, you know, your spirit keeps coming back every lifetime. So guess what? Those, those vows and those contracts are still going. So, you know, severing those contracts that no longer serve you, working with releasing karma, karmic debt with certain people and, you know, um, things that you've occurred, karmic uh, debt that you've occurred over many lifetimes. It can take a while once you're on that healing path, you know, depending on how old the soul is, there can be a lot of healing that goes on that, you know, we have seven chakras, but we also have seven other bodies. So there's like 14 dimensional bodies that we have to heal before that that you know issue that we're dealing with is really release let alone you've got the sure. brain which is trying to keep us alive and you know um all the the trauma that gets stored in the brain so yeah that's kind of the gist of it and then with counseling um i think you know i feel that in my shamanic work i do a lot of counseling in the beginning i do the work and then afterwards i'm counseling um and so you know when i went back to do my masters in counseling my my dream or the vision that I, was, that I was being shown was to bridge the gap between the two you know like bringing it spiritual counseling shamanic counseling shamanic psychology um working with the spirit first and then counseling people through that process and that's kind of like where that was born really sure sure and you've also added this uh, newer modality called brain spotting how does that fit mm -hmm. in with everything Brain spotting um, is just incredible. Um, for many years, I would journey on people and I would see these little black spots on their brain. And, you know, when I worked with the spirit world, um, my spirit friends and helping spirits would go in and suck the little black dots off the brain. And they would say to me, this person has a block on the left side of the brain, which is stopping that kind of more logical piece, getting out in the world, doing things. There's a lot of apathy because of this brain spot. I didn't think anything of it. I just thought it was a block, like, you know, our chakras get blocked when things are coming up for us. Um, you know, every chakra tells a story. So for years, we would just take the brain spot off and then we do a lot of healing on the brain and work with that. And then one day I came across brain spotting. I don't even remember how, and I couldn't believe it was a thing. I'm like, oh my goodness, like people are actually practicing this. They're finding these trauma spots in the brain um, where a lot of trauma um and you know all, all that kind of traumatic stuff from abuse and you know uh whatever accident surgery going back to that again um gets stored in the brain so with brain spotting we're kind of like going in and working with the visual field we're bringing up an issue from the past we're working with gazing and working with our visual field to kind of locate that brain spot and the brain spot is a block um and it's holding a space for somebody to go and actually Kind of release that brain spot themselves um, by using gazing and some of us you know will help them there'll be breathing techniques and uh, there's kind of, there's all kinds of other modalities it's modalities that some people bring in i bring in reiki uh, with a lot of my brain spotting mm -hmm. and i sat there and seen the most miraculous things happen people are sitting in front of me and i'm watching entities coming out of their spines and crawling up the wall and they're gone um you know i'm watching somebody who's like at a 10 schizophrenic, um, panicking, um, hearing voices and wanting to kill themselves. And within 20 minutes of, of brain spotting going from a 10 to a zero um, and just sitting there like, you know, like for the first time in like a month, feeling that self-regulation. Um, people talk about going for counseling for 20 years, like talk therapy um, and, you know, kind of going around the same old thing. Maybe they've, they have healed certain aspects of themselves, but they don't feel like they've really got to the core of it. Um, and when they do a brain spotting session within one brain, they're already feeling lighter and different. It helps to release the emotional component because the brain stores that trauma so that you can survive. You get up every day, you go to work and you live, but it doesn't mean to say that you've, you know, cleared that heaviness, those patterns of emotional um, sadness or malfunction, mental malfunction, um, addictions, all those things that a lot of us abuse, trauma that we kind of push down just to get on with life. So brain spotting kind of lifts it up and releases it through waves of energy. And yeah, it's, it's quite cool to watch people do their own healing.
instead yeah. of you know, me doing it or a practitioner doing it for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything is all complementary to each other. Right. It you does. Know, and it all- yeah, it all slides together and, and yep. it's really neat how, you know, you've been able to bring all these techniques together in some very powerful ways and, and just all the healing that you bring to, you know, not only the, the humans around, but, you know, the spirit world and everything too, because mm-hmm. everybody needs help. And that's, you know, the role of the light worker and light master and everything. Absolutely. So now with this brand new venture, like where did this idea come from with, with what is it called? The Windhorse Shamanic Paranormal Team Wisconsin. Yeah. I mean, it's a long name. I, I you know, <laughs> I'll probably shorten it. It'll probably just be like Wind Horse Paranormal Team or something. But I wanted at first to, you know, I wanted at first that shamanic component in there. And I wanted, you know, people to know where we're from in the area. Obviously, we're going to branch out all over. But um, yeah, it was something uh, Spirit was telling me for the last year and a half. You can't do this all on your own. Um, I was told by other healers that it was time for me to give it up um, because, it was starting to um, really weigh heavy on me and my family. Um, I think if you talk to any one of my kids, they tell me that they've been scarred for life with the things that they've seen. Um, and, you know, when I've had people in the house, cause I had at my business in my house for a long time. Um, and I think, you know, when you're working with, with all kinds of different people coming in, sometimes the energy leaves, you know, a stench or uh, an entity or an, will attach itself to the house or one of us. And definitely, I mean, it, it's not a fool's game. You have to be really on it. And there's times where energy comes in and it, it stays and it causes havoc. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been heavy. Um, it's, and it was, it's been beautiful. Um, but they were, you know, I, I've taught so many people over the last, however many years, um, you know, the classic shamanic journey course, shamanic techniques, um, and, and then Celtic techniques, all kinds of different techniques in shamanism. And basically I think, you know, uh, where were we? I've gone off track. <laughs> it's okay. Talk about, about the paranormal team. team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I've met some amazing people and spirits like, you know, we, you need to create a team of people, of light workers that can all come together um, and, you know, go out there in, in the state or wherever, because I have people from all over the state and, you know, throughout the country um, that can work in pairs and that can go into people's homes or can, you know, have a connection to what you're doing. They've been through the training because I do a six month shamanic basic course. I do an advanced shamanic six month course. And then I do an advanced advanced, we call it like six month shamanic course. And then I have, um, you know, people that come as apprentices. So, you know, we go through a lot of training and with with shamanism, like anything, you know, you, you learn by actually, um, you know, doing it. It's experiential. You have to be in it. You can, you can't really teach about it. You have to experience an attack. You have to experience energy and, you know, to be able to um, become really good at it. And that can take years. I mean, I've been doing this like since I was like 19 and I'm still learning Um, and we learn off our students too. So, but anyway, um, they were talking about this paranormal team because what I've noticed um, in the homes and the buildings and the land is that there is such an infestation of spirit, um, of spirits that are stuck. Um, And in order for our planet to go and raise its consciousness, we need to be able to let these spirits go. Um, They need to find their way home. And that's, you know, there could be soul parts that need to go into the upper world and and go home. They may need to, um, you know, work with their families a bit and then leave. But every spirit has a home. And if they're all hanging out in the earth, making people sick and in the graveyards and thick within the earth then our planet is not going to ascend so we are going through an ascension process right now and um a lot of my work too has been opening portals crystalline portals of light um it started when i was like 21 so however long that was um but in um england i was getting a lot of dreams along with other people um to open up and spirit was telling us to open up these portals of light um what came to me was cetus the whale and it had like 32 points and they told me that they wanted me to open up these portals and and create this new constellation on the land and what that was doing was bringing in energy and light to raise the consciousness of the earth 
um, because it was going to, like we're in the days now where it is getting really dark. And so those light beings, those ascended ones could come down through these portals of light um, and actually, you know, merge with people, teach people, spirit can move on, you know, that have been stuck for say 300 years, they see that light portal, boom, they're gone. And so it was huge um, then. It was, um, you know, in the 90s, it was like everybody in England, a lot of people were doing that. We had a lot of ceremonies at Stonehenge where we were celebrating it, um, this new energy coming in. I've done a lot over here too. So, um, you know, when I cleanse a house, um, I'm opening these portals by using a crisp, like a clear quartz crystal. We program it to, to keep this light open from the core of the earth to the divine realm. And we just, we're opening those shafts of light. So um, it's, it's a lot of stuff. So this paranormal team has been really important um, with all the teachings that I've given um, to be able to, you know, go into a home, um, talk to the spirit world, ask them why they're there, help them move on, um, release really negative entities or attachments, help heal people from karmic debt, not only from the land that they're sitting on, maybe, you know, the blueprint of something that's happened in that house, because there's a lot of houses, you know, they have energy from the last people that could have been domestic violence, someone being strangled in the front room, they keep hearing screams every night. So when we go in and cleanse that and clear it out, um, sometimes that's just a holographic image or a replay of energy. There's so much to it. So, you know, I, I've trained these people so that they can work on many, many levels and go in and bring peace and harmony to the spirits that are stuck within worlds and also bring peace and harmony um, to people that are living if that makes sense. So we do close uh, vortexes down and we do open up light portals outside of the house or out in the garden or down the street if it's really heavily infested with, with spirit. Sure. Um, and that's just, that's just been something that, you know, I've been doing, it's become intense, there's, there's a lot of it. And that's why I'm, I'm calling on um, these people to help. Sure. So, so with this team and everything now, I've been training also with this team and, you know, as, as you said before, a lot of these experience, our, our experiences are experiential, you know, and, and having to really learn because, because you can read a book all you want, but until you're in it and actually doing it, yeah. you know, it, it, it definitely makes the, the work different. So how, how would one become qualified to do this work with you? Well, I mean, you know, if you want to be part of the team, um, I've put it out there that people that have, you know, psychic ability, um, that have been working with shamanism, maybe for a couple of years or so, kind of know what they're doing. Um, it, you know, I'll interview them, I'll talk with them and see if they want to be part of this. I mean, you know, you don't have to have degrees, you know, all over, but it's, it's literally somebody that I think most people that are with me right now have this innate like drive to do it um you know and I've talked to them I've said to them you know you are going to experience like negative attacks um you are going to meet some really gnarly energies um you could go home with attachments um you know things could happen to you and your family and most people um that come to me have a drive it doesn't matter they're just like I I know I have to do this um so if you have a drive and you have ability and you want to help um, obviously, you know, we will get paid um, on this team, um, but we're going to be a, a formidable, a formidable force, um, an ethical force that's mm -hmm. going out there to help, you know, raise the consciousness of Mother Earth, close these negative vortexes down and help move displaced energy. Um, and also to, you know, work with these hybrid beings that keep appearing, um, you know, that are kind of thwarting people's lives, making people sick and ill and, and moving them on with the aid of our spirit friends and helpers. So anybody that's guided has good helps helping spirits that has a good heart that's humble and they're not doing it for, you know, recognition or whatever, then, you know, come on down. Definitely. Sure. Now, with this being a paranormal team, I mean, there's other paranormal teams out there. How does this differ from like what you'd see for, say, ghost, going ghost hunting or something like that? Yeah, uh, good question, because, I mean, you know, we all like ghost hunting. We all like being in graveyards and getting spooked. Oh, maybe we all don't. But you know what I mean? I think it, it's one of those things. Um, but I think the sad part of that is you've got a lot of teams that are going into homes, taking pictures prodding and poking these spirits, trying to get them to talk, 
um, getting audio. And a lot of time it's because they want to show people the reality of spirits. And that's a beautiful thing because people need to wake up. They need to realize, but you know, if you don't see it with your eyes, then obviously if you see something on camera, then you may start believing. But the problem with that is you're going in these ghost tours and everything. And, 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 uh, you're having an experience with this poor spirit that is stuck. And that could be you one day. That could be any one of us. We could die suddenly in a car accident, God forbid. Um, the spirit is out of the body, freaking out. And it's like, I'm not ready to leave. I don't want to leave. You know, I want to go back to my family. I'm not ready for this. And instead of moving through that window into the light, they tend to hover and, and lose that doorway. And then they go back to where they were from. And then they start haunting the people at, at the house um, mm -hmm. and making them sick and they never move on. So um, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> Just the difference between differences between uh, this team versus like ghost hunting teams. Oh you know, yeah. Right? So, yeah. you know, that's what we do. It's, it's a, it's a, a drive to help um, energy, which, you know, in spirit, which are all of us to be able to move on. I know it started years ago too, where, um, you know, I'd be in cave dwellings like in New Mexico or in Germany, you know, with the concentration camps, um, you, you're walking around and you feel the energy so intense. And for me, when I started working with a shamanism, I'm like, oh my God, I could help these souls move on. Sometimes there's mass soul loss all in one place. Um, and you walk through these valleys in the States too, and you can just feel the presence of all these, these beings that are, that are, you know, they're restless. They're not meant to be there anymore. It's mm -hmm. time for them to move on. And sometimes they don't want to move. And that's okay. You can't force any spirit to move, but you can talk with them. And usually it's ritual or ceremony. They're like, you know, um, honor me, feed me, and I will be with you. Um, but, you know, the, it, it's just, I've been in so many houses where I, I hear, help me all the time. Please help me. I'm stuck. I can't move on. Help me. And there's usually some kind of dark one that's sitting at a gateway or a doorway that's not allowing them to move too. So uh, a lot of that entails, you know, kind of like annihilating or disconnecting those dark ones. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And sometimes spirits get stuck too by other spirits, you know, maybe demonic forces that keep other souls trapped in everything. So, you know, like in those cases, you know, it's always seems to be safer to go in as a team versus, you know, an individual person. So it's so important that you're doing this work and really building this, you know, with the vast knowledge and everything that you have and experience. So yeah. Yeah. yeah very powerful. Exciting. Yeah. Um, so like, what are some, can you share some wild stories and experiences that you've had? Jeez. <laughs> I, I, know, I know you've had like two. <laughs> no, I, loads. Um, I think like one of the ones that really sticks out for me, um, was when I was little, um, I was like about seven years old and, you know, I went to Catholic school. And I remember one day we were sitting outside um, this cathedral in England, just enjoying the day. And I felt this overwhelming love come over me. And um, like I'd see, I'll tell you about it in a minute, but um, sorry, um, this angelic, it was an angelic being. It was an angelic presence, a female angel at first with these huge wings. Um, and it turned into this angel and it just appeared in this tree and it enveloped all of us and we all fell asleep. And there was all, you know, kids were just messing around. And then suddenly we all got really quiet and we fell asleep. And I had this profound vision of the angelic realm and walking up these golden stairs and this music was playing and it changed my life. It really did. Um, and I, I, before that, I'd had a really bad accident where my, I'd fallen down all these steps and cracked my head open. I had a blood clot in my brain. And I was like strapped to my bed for two weeks. And in that time frame. I would see a lot of spirits coming to me, but they were gnarly looking things. You know what I mean? Like, um, and they, they were trying to get at me and I was screaming of help. And everybody thought I was just hallucinating because of the thing. I've now know that, you know, when you have a couple of bangs on your head in your life, it does help bring more psychic ability or attunement. And I've had like hundreds of concussions, you know, with horses landing on me and things like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, after that angelic one, though, then I realized, hey, it's not all gnarly and heavy. There's this beautiful energy and that energy stayed with me like my whole life, really. Um, and then 
Another one was where at night I would crawl down on my belly through a hole in the earth and I hated going down there. Um, and it went on for about five years and I crawl down into this cave and there's all these children in there and we play, but I would look at them and they, they were, they were crying and they were like, when I want my mommy, I want my daddy. And I'm sitting there like, why am I in here? You know, oh, I'm in here to entertain them. It must be something I do to help these souls. Little did I know when I met my first shamanic teacher, he told me I was one of those lost souls. Uh -huh. And I spent my childhood in that cave because of things that happened to me in the past. Um, and I was in the land of the dead, um, you know, in that time frame, which was very fascinating to me because worldwide, cross-culturally in shamanic practices, there is such a thing called the cave of the lost children. And uh, I was in there most of my childhood. So fascinating stuff, um, you know, loads of things, you know, disembodied spirits, demonic, um, <laughs> little people, um, tall, you know, 20 foot spirits walking through the forest, you name it. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. And then working like over the years with um, different shamanic teachings and, and trainings and everything, have you studied around the, around the world in different places? Yeah. Um, well, England was like my training ground. Um, and then I ended up going to India, Nepal and Tibet. So I was over there for about a year. Um, we were there when the mnemonic plague hit, so we couldn't leave. Um, that was pretty crazy, but yes, it was absolutely incredible. I met the Dalai Lama. Um, we were in ashrams doing yoga, meditation, and working with the gods and goddesses in the Hindu religion. And then I worked a lot with Tibetan Buddhism um, and trained with teachers over there. Um, when I was over there, I kept having visions of coming to America. Um, and I ended up coming to America to support a friend of mine at a Sundance and um, ended up like living um, my ex-husband out in Santee Sioux Reservation um, out in Northeast Nebraska. I'm working with a beautiful elder there. Um, he was Lakota. And um, yeah, being a part of um, the Nipi Ceremony Sweat Lodge, I Sundance myself for like six years. Um, you know, I was singing on the drum and out there I learned so much. Um, and also in Wisconsin, I've learned a lot. Um, but I think, you know, over the last maybe 10, 15 years, it's been more spirit teaching, teaching me um, than like, you know, all the places I've been. It's almost like I was given all this information and then you know what it's like in journeys and in spirit, you get all this information and then it takes a, a few years for it all to just kind of assimilate and make sense. Because sometimes we have journeys after journeys, all this info, and then it doesn't happen for six months to a year. And then a year later, you're like, oh, yeah, that journey I had back there, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's fascinating stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And you mentioned you also, you're also trained in Reiki. Or, uh, what is that like? And, and bringing that into practice and other healing modalities too with crossing spirits over. Yeah. Um, interestingly, you know, I never really wanted to do Reiki because in England, we, we I kind of grew up doing hands-on healing. Um, we go to church and then we come out and go into a room and, you know, we'd all be sitting in a circle in chairs and all these old ladies would come around, lay their hands on you. And I would just sit there going, oh, this is nice. And <laughs> they were just regular healers, you know. Um, when I came over here, I'm like, why is everybody doing this Japanese healing modality? We can just do, we can use our own hands for healing anyway. All we have to do is download that divine love, that divine light. Um, but spirit told me to do it, um, to work with and, and, and bring that energy, bridge that gap. Because a lot of the stuff that I do, uh, I think a lot of people don't really accept it. Or they think I'm trying to be some kind of wannabe or, um, I'm making it all up. And I think with Reiki, a lot of people accept that in this country. Um, and I've really enjoyed it. I became a Reiki master teacher. I love working with the, the Japanese symbols um, and just the whole vibe um, of the Japanese culture as a past life that I had anyway. So I've brought that into my practice. So a lot of times I will do you know, a journey for someone, a shamanic journey, and then I'll give them Reiki afterwards. Or I've done, a, I do, a, sorry, do a lot of Reiki with people and animals. A lot of my Reiki is with animals, um, animals and birds, uh, working with their chakra systems, also with animals doing soul retrieval, power retrieval, all the same thing we do with people. Um, and, you know, using the symbols too, um, you know, when we are cleansing and clearing homes. 
um, because a lot of those ancient spirits, they don't recognize those symbols. So sure. when you're working with them in a vortex or, you know, in heavy parts of the house, um, putting the symbols on a house can really lighten the energy and shift sure. it, its vibration. Yeah, sure. So now you mentioned something with um, even animals being able to or having to have soul retrievals, power retrievals and things. Mm -hmm. How is it just like animal spirit and and things get attached to it throughout these lifetimes, traumas too? Absolutely. Absolutely. All the time. Um, you know, when you have a spirit living in a body, a physical body, you know, you are open to any um, attack from any other spirit. It's like somebody, you know, putting bad medicine on you in the old days or someone standing behind your back and talking about you. And when someone's talking behind your back or badly about you, you know, you can see like black darts or, you know, little kind of like little filaments of um, uh, what would I say? I'm trying to think of the word um arrowheads sure you'll see like um energy that's attack that attacks somebody the same with animals animals will absorb other people's energy so if you've got somebody that's sick in the house or if you're you've got dark energy coming around attacking people and when they're sleeping at night a lot of times the dogs and the cats will absorb that energy and they do that to protect their owner and then they don't they may last like two or three years and then they're gone they do absorb negative energy for us plus I had an experience once with a horse. Um, this horse was, uh, it always stands out to me, this one. Um, she, she went from being a really pleasant little horse that the kids would jump on and ride to becoming really um, dark and mean and ugly. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I was a horse trainer for years and still am. Um, and I jumped on that horse and I was trying to work with it and its ears were flat back and it dragged me into the wall and it was trying to crush my leg. And I'm like, what is going on with this horse? So I talked to the lady about it and I said, you know, I feel like this, this horse has like an attachment. And she sure. was like, what on earth is that? And, and, you know, a lot of people who are Christian um, too don't believe that animals have souls. Mm -hmm. Everything has a spirit. Everything has a soul. Um, that, that, you know, I believe in that animistic universe. Um, and I've seen it and worked with it a million times. So, you know, I was trying to explain to her that animals have souls or spirits and, you know, that there was an attachment. So she said, I don't care. I'm just mm -hmm. going to pay you whatever. Just do the work. Sure. Don't even tell me about it. So I did a journey on this horse the next day. And there was a man and like a spirit of a man living in her throat chakra. Okay. And I'm like, how on earth am I going to tell this woman that there's a, a spirit of a man and the horse is, you know, she's not going to believe me in the throat chakra. Right. So, um, I ended up doing that journey, pulled the man out and he was a man that had been hit on the road about oh. a week before. And, you know, it was in the paper, it was all documented or whatever. Um, and his spirit had freaked out so much. It was looking for a host. Wow. And it found that horse and it jumped into the horse and, and the horse was so angry because there was this energy in its throat. So I took the, you know, the man out, we took it onto the spirit world and we healed the horse next day, a couple of days later, we got on the horse. She was just beautiful. And I told them about it and they, they, I remember them coming out with some whiskeys and they were like, we just, you can't make this crap up. Like, <laughs> you know, how, how on earth did that work? But it worked. And so, you know, it's a beautiful, simple way of explaining attachments um, of energy sure. that come from different places. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. And so now with horses too, now I can't help but notice wind horse traumatic services. What, what significance does the horse have? Yeah, um, well, before it was called Sacred Shamanic Pathways, um, it's changed quite a bit in the way of the shaman, but um, I, yeah, Spirit came to me a couple of years ago, um, and we're like, you know, we want you to change the whole, like, context of the business, become more connected to it. It just seemed like I was just running with it, and personally, I mean, I was connected to it, but it was a, a beautiful horse, a, a white horse spirit, um, that was with me a lot and, um, you know, just really kept making its presence known. The wind um, is a very powerful part of like my medicine and bringing the two together, um, you know, kind of brought that, that energy, that fire of the horse, the personal power um, and the wind and the energy in the four directions and brought it together as this like, um, I would say like fire um of energy and healing so that's where wind horse came from wind horse also when i was in tibet means spirit so you know people would talk about like raising your wind horse which is raising your energy you know bringing in the wind from the directions and bringing the energy into your body and spinning it like a tornado so that you wake up and you become more empowered 
um, by your own chi, your own energy. So, yeah. Sure. And horses have such a connection too to humans and, oh, and yeah. how the electromagnetic, electromagnetic pulses and, and things from the hearts form and everything too. So it's amazing. And riding horses for years, you know, it's all intuition. It's all feel. It's all silent. You don't, you know, I mean, unless you, you talk to your horse, you know, and I've taught my horse some things by using my voice, but a lot of it is body language and, and intuition, silence and, and working yeah. with them. I mean, they're the most incredible creatures and they do have huge heart centers and, you know, you have a bad day and you'll go and spend time. Like I have a horse, a beautiful horse I've had for about 11 years now. And, you know, spirit says to me, you know, this horse is really special to you because you carry the people on your back um, and that horse will carry you on his back. And I, I never, I never forgot that. Um, you know, I'll go over there and just give him a big hug and you're instantly filled mm -hmm. with joy and, and that love really, that unconditional love that you get from animals, particularly those horses. So. Sure. Yeah, yeah they're sure. very, very powerful spiritual beings and everything. Yeah. Absolutely. So I just, one thing I wrote down um, in kind of the beginning of our talk, you had mentioned where, when you were young, your spirit was out of your body. And I know a lot of people experience that without even knowing it, um, you know, and it kind of ties, you know, to where you can get more, um, you know, maybe entities or maybe attachments and things when that happens. Like, how would somebody know if your spirit's kind of popping out of your body? I know a lot of people are like that. Um, most people that come and see me, I would say three quarters of them um, are like that. Um, basically, you know, if you've gone through accidents, trauma, abuse, lost of loved ones, past life traumas, you know, you come into this earthwalk um, kind of like a, a tortured soul in a way. Um, and when you experience mass soul loss, part of your spirit is looking for those soul parts still when it comes back to earth. So it's restless. And you don't really feel like you're whole. You feel like you talk, you know, you talk to people and they say, God, so-and-so took a part of me. I feel like something's missing from me. I feel this gaping hole, this wound when this, when this person left or when they said something to me. Um, or, you know, there's a ripping sensation when a relationship breaks down, all those kind of things. Um, and what happens is then the spirit tends to kind of want to go home. And home isn't the earth, you know, our, our homes are in these astral realms um, and, and different planetary systems and, and solar systems. So we, we have this thing where we want to go home, which uh, then the spirit becomes restless. And when I talk about being out of the body, it's almost like if you if you can visualize like a fully formed soul spirit is like a huge ball of light. And then we have that holographic image of ourselves, how we see ourselves. But when that light has been broken you know, pieces go, then there's a little light left and that light wants to go home. So it's like pulling and it comes up and out of the crown chakra and it tends to just kind of hang like this. And the rest of it comes to around like the throat area. So a lot of people that are in their heads, overthinkers that analyze everything to pieces um, or people that don't want to feel, they don't want to feel emotionally you know, sure. sexually, uh, on any level, um, they don't want to feel in their root chakras, then what they do is they disconnect the energy and the, the spirit, the soul sits here and up and out. I see people walking in their energies like this. And usually they have a tear on the left side of their energy field and all their energy is going out this way. Um, and we work on closing down that tear. We work on bringing the spirit back. But in order to bring the spirit back, we have to do soul retrievals and healing on the lower three chakras, which is the energetic bodies of, you know, emotion, jealousy, um, sadness, depression, all those things. Um, so when people come to me and they say, um, I've been super accident prone, um, I, I'm not in my right mind, I can't get anything done. Um, you know, they may procrastinate and talk about things they want to do, but they never get them done. They never put them into reality. That's somebody that is ungrounded. Their spirit is not fully in the body because they don't want to feel. So their spirit is always popping up and out. Okay. At night, they travel. The spirit travels, tries to go home. When they wake up in the morning, they're restless. They get up in the morning and they feel like their spirit you know, they're, they're just not here. And so they go to school, they go to work, they're out. So guess what happens? Loads of accidents. And that's what happened to me. I was like out of my body all the time, looking down at myself. Um, and I loved it. I kind of loved the lofty feeling of it, but you know, it, it put me in a lot of really, um, awful situations. Um, but it was meant to happen like that for me, 
Um, and I find a lot of people, they like being out of body. They don't want to feel the 3D of the heaviness of the earth. Sure. So, you know, when you do bring them back into their body, they're like, oh, you know, I'm like, I'm really here. But I'm like, well, now you're here. You can do something. You can manifest all these thoughts that you've had in your head and actually do something with them. So, yeah. Sure. Sure. Do you find, what do you think would be uh, maybe, you know, if, if kind of society, there's so many people out of body because they don't want to experience it here, but then when they do cross over, do you think they would maybe have a tendency to get stuck more? Yeah, or absolutely. yeah because they're they're kind of just spirited and things yeah and i think in like soul retrieval too you know a lot of times we'll, i'll go in and i'll see you know part of their soul as a three-year-old or a four-year-old like literally walking in a desert like or walking completely the opposite direction of where that person is because they've gone through some kind of like significant trauma the spirit is like i'm out of here i'm trying to go home and i have to go you know back in there with my helping spirits and say hey you need to come back because you're leaving, um, you know, this person right here, super dispirited, they're never going to function normally. Um, and so yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of that um, from past lives and people not wanting to, you know, really, like come back, because in order to come back, they have to feel but that's where all that healing from the soul retrieval comes in. Sure. And brain clotting. Yeah. Yeah, everything really rolls in all together. It's, it's, it's such big concepts and everything, but, you know, being able to see everything and work with, work with all the realms of, of the spiritual, the physical, the mental, the emotional, you yeah. know, and tie it all together is, is so incredibly powerful for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so with this paranormal team and everything, how would say somebody get a hold of you, um, you know, and reach out and things? Yeah, I mean, we're going to do lots of advertising. We're going to try and get on the radio. Um, we're just really putting it out there um, in, in Wisconsin because I have people all over. We have people in Eau Claire, up in Stevens Point, people in Milwaukee, um, people up north, and a, a lot of people around here in Green Bay that have trained with me. Um, really great people who are psychic mediums, healers, light workers, shamans. Um, every one of the team has, um, you know, something to offer. I would have liked to have talked to them about them tonight a little bit, but they haven't got me all their bios yet. So that'll be something coming down the line. So check out um, the windhorseshamanicservices.com um you know the web page check out all the facebook um stuff and you know give me a call um i will actually be taking the calls initially and then sending people out to different areas um and then once we get that website set up properly then you know there'll be numbers for um and contact information for people you know in the areas that you live and you know we we will charge but it's affordable um, you know, because we're putting ourselves at risk every single time we go, you know, onto the land, um, into buildings, people's homes, doing deep possessions on people, um, you know, it is, it is risky. Um, and it, or it just takes us a little while to clean mm -hmm. ourselves off sometimes. So, you know, we, we do charge that. I know a lot of ghost hunter groups are free, um, you know, because they're going and experimenting with different films and cameras and everything. Um, for us, we are, you know, doing proper, professional, ethical, spiritual work. Um, and you won't be disappointed. Um, I have tons of testimonials I'm going to put up as well um, from many different people um, that we've worked with over the years. So yeah, just give us a call. Yeah. It's just like calling, you know, an insect exterminator or something, <laughs> yeah. you know, a spirit That's exterminator. <laughs> so absolutely valuable services that are, you know, much needed and things. So, um, you know, and that's another thing bringing in, you know, kind of the, the exchange for payment for, you know, spiritual services and things is, is absolutely necessary too, you know, so um, it's important to bring that up and things. Um, is, I'll also be posting yeah. all of your contact info too on, you know, magic hands and, and all over. Mm -hmm. So that way people know how right. to get, get a hold of you. But um, so now just in Wisconsin, just how about some fun stories? Do you know, like a little bit of lore or some cryptids or what's unique about Wisconsin? Because I know there's unique energy here. Yeah. Um, Wisconsin is incredible. Um, I, I've had my first experiences with werewolves here. Um, I've worked and, and I've seen a lot of hybrid beings, um, particularly doing vision quests um, up here in this Arishano area. Um, and, you know, I lived in a house um, that is now part of uh, like a ghost tour, a paranormal tour in Wisconsin. Me, me and my family um, lived there for about a year. And that's where I saw uh, the werewolves. Um, and, you know, I've seen many 
um, hybrid creatures. Uh, I would say like the goat man, pig men, pig women, half horse, half man, um, centaurs, little people, um, and all kinds of like uh, almost like a mermaid creatures, butterfly ladies that hang out around the rivers and the lakes. Um, we have such incredible, um, well, we, I mean, you, it's not my place, but <laughs> there's such a diverse um, amount of spirits because the energy is incredibly deep within the earth. And there are, there are a lot of fishes within the earth and there's a lot of like, it's hard to explain, like um, cracks within the earth here where a lot of these hybrid beings come up and through. So there's, there's worlds within worlds, like the Sasquatch, the Bigfoot, the little people um, and hybrid beings, these humanoids um, that tend to be in the large tracts of forest, particularly where I am, Shano and up towards Michigan. Um, and it gives room for all these like spirits and these beings to be here. Plus all the Native American tribes and you know different beings that have worked with them in the past that are still here. Um, and so, yeah, it's profound. Um, you know, I, there's a lot of stuff in England. Um, a lot of in, in England is, is more fairy, um, you know, uh, the weird energy, um, the goddess, the goddesses and the gods on the land. But the elementals in England are really big here. The humanoids are really intense. And I'm talking about, you know, beings that are connected with outer space, like star beings um, that, that are manifesting in the land. Um, I mean, I could go on forever about that, but there is definitely a unique energy in the forest and the land here and the vortexes are very open and clear. So I know a lot of people that go around and they siphon off energy from the earth in different places in Wisconsin because it is so intense, the earth magic with the earth energy. So yeah, definitely we've got our work cut out here. Um, yeah, let alone the rest of the United States, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I know, you know, and just, just to put it out there for people, because um, fairy gets thrown around a lot, that word, um, you know, and, and I know it's a race on this planet and everything, but fairy spirit is a lot different England versus, you know, in America and things. Um, what is fairy spirit and what, what are the differences? Yeah, um, I, I think, you know, it depends uh, on the land, the vibration. I think in England, you know, people are, people have woken up a lot over the last 30, 40 years. Um, and they know uh, there's a lot of um, wicked people, druids, uh, and a lot of shamans, Celtic shamans that have kind of kept that energy alive. Um, you know, so around some of the forts and the castles and the valleys, um, you know, there's all kinds of different like fairy folk, uh, the pixies and the goblins and, you know, um, you name it, the, it's just everywhere. Um, and I think, you know, there's more of an honoring of it over there, um, you know, in some respects. Uh, there's ribbons on the trees, people recognize sacred valleys or sacred wells, they will do ritual and ceremony, they've been doing it for years. And, you know, the government is protecting like Stonehenge to keep that fairy energy going. Fairy really is, it, it's, it's like a, an elemental, a sliff of, of, of light it's a, it's a being that vibrates and flips between two different worlds. Um, and that, you know, they come in to like bring, uh, uh, what's the word, blessings on the land, blessings on people's homes. Um, and they also, there's, there's also manipulative ones that kind of come in and they'll go into people's homes and mess with their minds or twist their hair and, and want to, to bring you into their world. So it's just, again, it's, it's another form of spirit um, that works within the forest and the rivers and the land. Over here, um, it you know, fairy folk, I haven't seen them as much in the sense of the way they look in England. Um, it's more elementals like tree spirits or, you know, river spirits uh, and, and shrubs and things like that. It's much, it's a little bit more like concrete, um, but the hybrid beings are the things that I've noticed more. Um, the tree spirits here are incredible too, but I see them in a different form than I see them in England too. Um, just they just have different faces they have different guises um, and you know the same as uh, the goddess energy it, it it's similar but it isn't um, it's just it's like it takes on a different um, what's the word coat or like uh, outer layer in in connection to the land you know that you're working on if that makes sense yeah yeah absolutely right. that makes sense yeah, yeah. Um, so let me think, I, I just had a question here. 
and then I got distracted. <laughs> um, oh, what was it? I know it was with uh, hybrid beings and everything, but you said that there's like Pigman, Mothman and things like that. But if somebody were to want to kind of connect with maybe fairy spirit or something angelic, um, you know, the higher dimensionals and things, how could just somebody connect, you know, sit in the woods or, or Absolutely. whatnot? You got it right there. I mean, it's going into the woods and it's going in with an intention um, to connect with spirit and emptying your mind. Um, you know, before you even go in there, like maybe smudging yourself down, you know, just becoming very quiet in your mind, switching off the radio, and then taking time to walk through the woods with no chatter in your mind, you know, taking time to just walk with a very open heart, um, and sitting down, meditating, you know, doing some breath work, maybe even bringing your drum and just drumming lightly and quietly. Um, I think, you know, the most spirit activity that I've seen elemental wise, fairy wise, goddess wise is always by water um it's by the lakes it's by the rivers and the streams um and in england you know the ocean um with the mermaid energy i mean we have an incredible place we go to a lot is hayman falls where we do a lot of training down there um and the elementals there are just out of this world you know there, there's there's beings that come out of the water with bright blue eyes that are that are like half woman and half have fish and you I wouldn't have believed it with my own eyes if I hadn't seen it that it was absolutely incredible but there has there's a darker like connotation to it as well it's like leave me alone you know you saw me now leave me alone um you know and I hadn't seen anything like that um when I was back in Europe so mm -hmm. you know and then there's different spirits out in Tibet and Nepal and India um but I think you know it, it's taking that time to be where you feel really light like when you're walking in the woods you know, you can go through some areas that feel really heavy and dark. And you're like, I just want to get out of here. I don't feel sure. like I'm right here. Spirit doesn't want me here. The land doesn't want me here. So I just keep moving on until I find a pocket of light or I feel, you know, I feel energy or the whispers of spirit whispering in my ear. You know, a tree may be glistening. Go and sit down by that tree. Go sit by the water. And the water spirits are absolutely beautiful. I mean, the water raises that vibration. It changes mm -hmm. energy into like more positive ions. So, you know, it, it's it's very healing when you go by water and there's a lot of more angelic kind of fairy-like folk that, you know, are by water. Also in ancient forests, anywhere that's old, that's untouched, um, definitely has like a, a more powerful sacred energy. Sure, that sounds beautiful. And, yeah. and, you know, people can relate to that too by, you know, everybody knows that when you go sit by water, you can feel that it's calm, you hear it and, mm -hmm. and things like that. So even if you're not, you know, don't think that you're gifted or anything, you know, you can still relate and everything like that. So, yeah. And I think, you know, just switching off your mind, doing some breath work, you know, that kind of box breathing where you're breathing in for four seconds, hold your breath, breathing out for four seconds, like watching the breath, um, you know, and, in a very quiet way helps to kind of you know still the mind and to develop your psychic ability to develop that consciousness which is a more highly evolved you know energy is by stilling the mind because you know living living in the universe as we do today everything's based on the left on the left brain it's all logical thinking going to university getting your degrees and if you don't have a degree people don't want to know you um, and it's not about that. It's about using your whole brain, not just like one side of the brain. So, you know, people say to me, how do I develop this? How do I develop that? My intuition, it's being quiet. It's sitting for 20 minutes a day and then build it up to maybe 45 minutes a day of just breathing, meditation. And boom, before you know it, you're becoming more intuitive, more aware, telepathic um, and beginning to see visions because you're allowing that vast brain that we have to open up. Sure. And work yeah and more whole sure life. that's wonderful so i know in the past you've also done uh, different goddess circles and different meditation circles shamanic journeying is that something you can see bringing back or have you have you had any interest in that yeah i definitely um the goddess is really big in england and glastonbury um and every time i go there she's like bring me over you know bring me over create these these groups of women definitely um i know that the only thing is with me right now is i do i work full time for family services in green bay as a suicide prevention counselor so i work nights and it takes a lot of my time and that's something that i've i'm doing because i'm meant to be doing it right now um 
So yeah, when I get some freer time and organize it better, I really do want to bring the goddess circles back on the solstices. Um, you know, last night was All Hallows Eve, All Hallows Eve Samhain, which is the new year of the Wiccan calendar. So it's New Year's Day for, you know, the Wiccans and the Druids and the Pagans. Um, today is a very special time and I had to work last night. So otherwise I would have had big groups of people. Um, so yeah, definitely down the line, I see it kind of opening back up again and, and bringing that divine feminine, you know, back awakening the divine feminine in the land because the divine feminine is coming in, in a huge way as we go into the age of Aquarius, mm -hmm. everything is shifting and growing and changing. We're coming out of that old Piscean age of order and control and you know that patriarchal energy and now we're going into this more matriarchal age so you know there's a big shift and change it looks like everything's so ugly right now you know with everything breaking yeah. down everything has to break down the old paradigms have to die for this new energy to come in um and you know this this energy to be reborn so yeah i mean it's it's a great time to be alive and you know if you spend time um being quiet meditating getting out of the cities into the forest waking up healing yourself I, I feel that if people aren't doing that if you don't meditate and you don't find some form of spirituality or peace in your life groundedness then you will get caught up in in the mass hysteria and the panic um and you will you know your mind is just going to feel like it mm -hmm. it's it's like a, you know in a wash it's kind of like a a, a drying cycle you know it's just yeah. uh, this kind of really heavy energy that's coming in from all over um people i mean are losing it i think we all are yeah. to some degree as mm -hmm. well and the energy is so fast moving um yeah. you know you make a decision one day the energy comes in it completely shifts and changes the next so it's hard yeah. to hold on to things so yeah. bringing in a spiritual practice whether that's just walking down through the woods every day with your dog you know, breathing, lighting the candle, smudging, those things are sacred and they bring you back to what's really real, that groundedness sure. and that connection to spirit. Sure. You know, and, and just, you know, with uh, to all the, all the dark that's rising and all the work that's being done there, there's also a lot of light that's rising, you mm -hmm. know, and being able to call in these star beings and these angelic entities and, and, and angels and, you know, all sorts of things in order to help also lift this heaviness and help you know motivate to get out to the woods and things too well because they're working within the realms they're working already on other realms and other dimensions to help lighten up this planet and they're working with their own battles you know that we don't even see every day we have our own things that we're dealing with and you know the more we can open up portals of light the more we can have circles of people coming together bringing in that light the more light workers come in teams and just go out there and birth those visions and have those healing centers, you know, have work as, work as a community. Gosh, the planet will rise, you know, the energy is going to rise very quickly. Um, yeah. You know, sometimes I see people, you know, even light workers just are all at each other, you know, and in, instead of, oh, this person said that, or they do this, instead of that, it's, it's about like honoring who we are and coming together as one um, to keep bringing in that light and increasing that that beauty that, you know, the, yeah. the planet is trying to be reborn into. Absolutely. You know, and things like the, the new paranormal team and everything and, and all the other collaborations that you do too is, you know, really helps others um, build that community and see what community looks like because mm -hmm. it takes one to ripple and pretty soon we have, you know, this mass world effect and everything. Absolutely. I think the spirit world is just, you know, people just, they just don't take it seriously. I've, I've been an ambassador for the spirit for years. It's like, I, you know, people need to wake up and realize that we, we are spiritual beings having a physical experience on this earth. It's not the other way around. And there are many, many spirits, our ancestors, grandfathers, grandmothers, um, children from past lives um, that are stuck, um, that are lost, that are not whole. Um, and it has been a mission of mine um, to, you know, bring that back, that wholeness to the planet, to our homes, to ourselves, to our animals, you know, on every way, on every level, because everything is connected. And once sure. that spirit, that wound is healed, and within Mother Earth too, when I was Sundancing, that's all I, you know, really Sundance was about, was about the Earth, the, you know, mm -hmm. because of so much abuse that she's gone through, um, you know, with the oil being extracted, all of it, and, 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 and the bombs and everything that have gone off within her, and in the waters, you know, once we heal the spirit of the Earth, then everything else is going to heal, and there's going to be that 
that beauty, that connection, that love and light and that healing that's going to come in to our communities and into our homes. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I guess we're, we're about at the end of our time. Do you have any um, final words or thoughts or, or anything else you would like to share? No, I'm, I think we covered a lot. Um, you know, just give me a call anytime, email me with your concerns. Um, you know, if you have uh, homes and lands and uh, whether it's your, your business or, you know, whatever it is, give me a call and I'll send you some great people. Um, I will be on a lot of those trips as well um, until we get really established. Um, but yeah, we're here to help um, offering shamanic journeys, healing sessions, um, lots of courses going on. We're updating the website every day. Um, so just, you know, keep that communication open. Um, I want to thank Dawn. Um, did you even talk about yourself a little, just a little bio on you? This amazing woman, Dawn, has been <laughs> in my classes the last two years and all the incredible work that she does. So I'm just going to hand it over to her. Um, you're up in yeah. Stevens Point. So yeah, so I'm in Stevens Point. Yeah. I have uh, the Magic Hands Reiki and also Angels of Alwyn uh, Healing Center. And uh, also uh, run Raise the Vibe Fairs. And unfortunately, I had to cancel this last fall because of illness and things, uh, but hoping to bring that back in spring. Um, following the shamanic path, that's been absolutely my journey too, as I found and I started studying. I said, this has been me my whole life. Now it's finally wonderful to find a home for that and also to really dive down deep into my own spirituality and, and really connection and everything. Um, and, you know, bringing in Angels of Omelin, which is a healing center. I have five rooms here uh, looking for vendors. Also, we're going to be doing uh, some different, like what I'm calling meta markets. So it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, weekends or even during the week where we're going to have some different readers and healers here. Um, it's all about building community. It's been such a strong drive just to build community. And as to what community means, that's been always the question. Uh, it's connection, it's building a resource, you know, at least there's a place here that people know that they have a resource that they can find other professionals and, you know, people in the spiritual world that it, it's, it's not like there's a network you can just go online because there's so many people that do it that don't, aren't doing it for the right reasons, mm -hmm. you know, so building all that. Um, but yeah, also just this shamanic path has been fascinating with Deb and um, learning um, and then this new paranormal team, I said, like I told her, I said, whether I do it with her or whether I do it on my own, I'm called to do it. And that's what she was talking about with that drive. And, and just to really bring that because it's, it's just a part of your soul. There's, that's the only way I can describe doing that and to bring that healing work and here as an absolute light worker to share that love and to bring that light is so important, mm -hmm. um, to have that spark and to show people that there can be life, you know, and things like that. So um, it's been a very fascinating time. And then now with this interview, and, and I think we're going to be doing some more of these because that was pretty fun and, and stuff like that, because it's, it's time people need to hear these things and people need to know what's going on. So, mm -hmm. you know, and as we progress moving kind of off the Facebook platform, uh, because of different, you know, reasons, um, just expanding into things, um, also kind of see some different things coming down the pipeline, maybe in that way for not so great of things uh, happening there. So, you know, it's just um, moving around. So that way you can contact and connect with as many people as possible uh, for this healing work and things. So um, I guess I should say out of my office too, I'm a Reiki master and teacher and I offer shamanic services, different psychic services. Uh, going to be adding some consulting coming up here soon um, and also some life coaching type services because everybody needs some counsel. So that's Thank about you. it. Thank you so much. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and it's wonderful, you know, connecting and, you know, both of us connecting and also connecting with all the other amazing, wonderful yeah. healers and teachers and students. And just it's the flow of life is wonderful when you're, when you're really flowing in all these, all these different relationships and things and learning and going. And, you know, like she was saying with the energy changing um, so much over the past, you know, it's like, you make a decision yesterday, it's going to be different today. And that's how the energy is, you know, and especially I, I love talking about the planets and, and how that's really affecting things with the uh, new moon coming up, you know, on the fourth, and it's time for setting those intentions and really making those changes in life. So, you know, you're going to see a big burst of energy, just like this starting, um, along with everybody's going to start bursting into these different energetic kind of ways after you take a real deep dive into that dark darkness. So, 
you know, to bring the light there. So, yeah, absolutely. But everything for everything, all of the contact info um, for you is, is for Deb is going to be posted um, on the pages and everything. So it's easy to access and easy to find and things. So um, yeah, building this network is, is really cool. Yeah, it is. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Deb, for joining tonight. Thank you. Well, have Absolutely a good night. So, bye, everyone. Thank <laughs> bye, you. Bye, everybody. <laughs>